thank you that you're here, God, even if we don't feel it. God, we thank you that you're in this place, God, that you want us, God, more than we can ever want you. God, we thank you that your love for us is so strong, God. I pray for a night, God. I pray that your hand would be over it, God, that every single person in this room, God, that they would encounter you in a new way. God, if they have followed you their whole life, or God, if this is their first time, God, I pray that they would have an encounter with Almighty God. So God, would you bless our time? Would you, God, give me the words to preach in this message? And God, would you just anoint whatever you want to anoint tonight, God? Give us the power, give us the strength we will to say what you want to say. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Such good worship, so good. All right, y'all can be seated. Find a seat, find a seat. Oh my goodness. All right, yeah, we don't need that. All right, what is up, y'all? Um, so we're in a new series, it's wild. We're in Do Not Disturb. And the message title I have is The Voice of God, okay? I am, wild. <laughs> so we're gonna be talking about the voice of God today. And as I kind of was preparing for this, as I was looking over this, I didn't know really what angle to come at this. But as I continued to kind of pray, and I continued to uh, seek God, I felt that the main reason, the main stumbling block for us not understanding the voice of God, for us seeing the voice of God as such a hindrance, as such a weird concept, is because we try to follow God in a matter of religion and not relationship. You see, religion is only a one way of communication. See, I can talk to God, but relationship is I talk to God, but he also talks to me. See, there is a pivotal thing that is wrong with just religion. It's the fact that I believe that God will not speak to me. I believe that he is so almighty God, that he is so lifted high, that he has no time for me. Or if he has time for anyone, it's for the good Christians. And I want to put this into a way that we can kind of better understand. Okay, so have y'all ever had um, a celebrity that you guys just adored? Have you ever had someone you're just like, oh, amazing? For me, <laughs> I've had multiple. And I've gone to extraneous, like, lengths to just try to be recognized by them. I have legit emailed people multiple times, just asking random questions just to get a response. I would jump through hoops just to get a response from any celebrity. It's just so fun to me. But <laughs> we can treat our relationship with God the same way. We act like God is this celebrity on a pedestal that maybe if I just jump through enough hoops, maybe if I live perfectly, maybe then I can access God. Maybe then his voice and his presence will be tangible to me. But see, the truth is, if that was a criteria for us to be able to hear the voice of God, none of us would hear a peep, ever. Because we are all fallen, we are all broken. But it is the grace of God that he has chosen us, that he loves us, and that he wants to talk to us. So I want to tell you today that religion, we actually I have a point for this, actually. The first point is that, if we can pull it up. <laughs> okay, oh. Maybe I didn't give it to you. You're good. Um, <laughs> this is what it is. So, um, so, okay. So the truth is that God's voice is no longer the reward for perfect behavior, okay? We don't have to try to stir up anything to receive God's voice. But now, because he wants to speak to us, we can just simply receive it. And now it is the catalyst for our life. Okay, so we know that God wants to speak to us. And actually, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says this. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Sounds weird, sounds confusing. All this is saying is that we know God in part while we're on earth, but he fully knows us while we're here. He fully knows us and he loves us and he wants to communicate with us. Okay, we have this out of the way. We know that God wants to talk to us. And if we can get a preach clock, that'd be great. <laughs> we know that he wants to talk to us. We know that he loves us. So what are the characteristics of God's voice? What does God's voice truly look like? What does it truly, what does it consist of? I want to tell you that the first thing that the voice of God consists of is that it's deeply personal. The voice of God is deeply personal. It is for you. Uh, John 10, 3, it says this. The doorkeeper opens a gate for this man. Okay, so also, real quick, context, because we just jump right into it. <laughs> He's talking about, Jesus is talking about himself, okay? So Jesus says, the doorkeeper opens a gate for this man, and the sheep hear his voice and pay attention to it. And knowing that they listen, hear that, knowing that they listen, they heard his voice already. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out to pasture. See, a God who is pulled out from creation, a God who does not care for the individual, would never call his sheep by name. 
This indicates right here that there's a personal relationship going on. If we go on to the next verse, it's uh, John 10, 14. It says, I am the good shepherd. This is Jesus talking. I am the good shepherd, and I know without any doubt those who are my own, and my own know me and have a deep personal relationship with me. God loves y'all so much that he wants to know you. Legit, you sitting in this chair, he wants to know your heart. See, he created you with purpose, with such unique intricacies, and he knows you intimately. He wants to walk through this life with you. And the beautiful thing is that um, there's another passage too where it talks about there's 100 sheep, okay? 99 stay, and then there's just one straggler. This one straggler who just dissipates. You ever have that like friend group and y'all all are like clicked together and then all of a sudden you look and there's just one person just gone. I had a nephew like that constantly. He'd just be gone out of nowhere. So weird. <laughs> but God seeks out the one out of the 99 sheep. He seeks him out. He finds them and he brings them back. That shows that God cares for the individual. He does not see you as a number, but he sees you truly for who he created you to be. God wants to know you. He wants to communicate with you. So God's voice is deeply personal. Okay, what else does God's voice consist of? God's voice consists of perfect love. See, God did not make you just so that you're an object of his wrath. <laughs> God made you because he so innately loves you. Um, it says in uh, uh, 1 John, it says this, that whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. God is the very nature of love. He loves us so much. And if you read uh, 1 Corinthians, it talks about the characteristics of God, of, well, actually of love. But if we know God is love, and if they're describing love, they're also describing God. And it's love is patient, love is kind, Love is not envy, love is not boast, love is not proud, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not easily angered. That is all describing God. His heart is for you. Uh, it says elsewhere too, and also, God didn't just talk about love from heaven. God didn't just say, you know, I love you guys so much, you guys are great, and then just kind of go with his business. No, he loved us so much that he came down to earth to die for us. Why? Because our sin separates from God. We're not perfect, but he is. He is the fullness of goodness. And we, ourselves, because we sin, we have to be separated from the source of all goodness. And we deserve a punishment. But God, out of, his, out of his love, out of his great love for us, he saw us, he chose us, and he came down to die for us. Why? So that we could be close to him. That is the beauty of God's love. And we have just celebrated that with Easter and that he didn't just die, but he rose again, showing that he is truly almighty God that he is God, and that there is nothing else that we will face in this world that he cannot overcome. Um, and then in Psalm 139, it talks about this beautiful personal nature of God. He says, how precious to me are your thoughts? So this is David talking. Uh, this is in the Old Testament. But take this as if um, you were in his shoes, okay? So how precious to me are your thoughts, God? How vast is the sum of them? Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I'm still with you. See, God is so big, and he is that celebrity on that pedestal. He is almighty God, but yet he still chooses to know you. Yet he still wants to know you. That is the beauty of the voice of God, is that he has chosen to know you, and that is personal, and that is overflowing with love. Um, another beautiful point about this is that God will not say something that is not in alignment with his heart. See, it says in the Bible that from the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks. So if that's for us, how much more true is that for God? See, he gave a heck of a word for this leader rally. And she said that basically, if God says something, he will not lie. So if he says he loves you, that is not a conditional statement. He says, I love you to the very end. You are my child when you're in Christ. You will never get away from my love. It is a proven fact. It is not like, oh, yeah, I love you. Like some, some of us, we have friends in this world that's like, yeah, we love you. And then like two minutes later when you mess up, they're just gone. That's not the heart of God. The heart of God is fully bought in. It is fully passionate for you, for you specifically. I want you guys to understand that today. It is for you. So we understand that it's personal, that it's loving. What else is it? Well, God's voice also consists of unimaginable power. See, he is God, so his voice is above every other voice. See, the voice in your head is not as powerful as God. God has the final say, 
If you would just let him have the say in your life, it will overwrite any of those doubts, any of those fears, any of those lies that you struggle with. God has the power to overwrite it. You see, God, God formed the entire universe, the entire universe in legit just speaking it out. Yo, I can barely get my dog to listen to me, okay? He just goes anywhere he wants, like, bro, come on. <laughs> but God can mutter a word, then all of a sudden, things become, get into alignment. And oh my goodness, if he says that over us, why don't we become receptive? Why don't we receive it? Because he is just waiting on our willingness. God can do it. He has all power. He has all love. He has every single desire for us. But we just have to let him. We just have to let him. He gives us free will. We get to choose. Why? Because if we didn't, if he forced his love on us, that would not be true love. That would be manipulation. That is not the heart of God. So he lets us choose. And when he says he loves us, because he has unimaginable power, that that's truly sink in. The same God, I said this before, but the same God who holds the entire world into his hand, okay, he also holds mine. He wants to know you. That, wrap that around your mind. That should change everything. And this is why, I don't have a verse for this, but this is why in Psalm 23, David can say, the Lord is my shepherd. See, he's my good shepherd. I know him, he knows me. But then he can say, I lack nothing. Why do I lack nothing? Because the God who holds the whole world in his hands can truly hold my situation, can truly hold my grade of my tests. Oh my goodness, end of the world. See, we get so caught up in our circumstances that we lose sight of the eternal matters at hand. That God is still at work. God still wants to work in your life. He isn't just for the megs of this world who are like ultra holy, who are amazing and righteous and amazing in every way. No, he's also for you, the one who just messed up. When he just sinned, his heart is for you. His heart and his voice consists of unimaginable power. What else? Let's see, okay, it's gonna take a little, a little bend, but I want you to follow me here, okay? It's gonna say, it's gonna be a little crazy, but God's voice is also meant to convict me. Okay, come on, <laughs> get y'all. No, God's voice is meant to convict me. See, the reason why we struggle with this is because we have had a conflict in our, um, we've learned it, or we've just convinced ourselves enough that conviction and condemnation mean the same exact thing. And see, it wasn't until I really dug into this that I even separated in my own mind. Because when God used to convict me, I was like, oh, dear goodness, I got to run the closet, fix myself up. Now I'm back, God, <laughs> back better than ever. It's like, God already saw, in that uh, 1 Corinthians 13, it says, I am fully known by God. Before you even know your sin, God already knows it and he has chosen to love you. He's already expressed it with unimaginable power, so we just receive that. So first thing is that conviction is grounded in love. It says a father um, disciplines a son he delights in. That's in Proverbs 3. How much more will God do that for us? He delights in his children. He will convict us. Why? Because sin is messy. Sin may feel pleasurable, but oh my goodness, will it leave you worse than it found you? Sin hurts you, but it also hurts those around you. God wants to protect you. Um, Brandon, I don't know if any of y'all know Brandon, but Brandon's amazing. And one of the things I'm going to steal from him tonight is that he says when God says no, he's saying don't hurt yourself. When God is saying no to you, he's saying don't hurt yourself. Um, okay, so conviction is grounded in love. Condemnation is grounded in shame. It wants to pull you down. It wants to convince you that you are not good enough. That, oh my goodness, you got to hide it literally makes no sense, too. You're going to try to hide from Almighty God who already sees your problems, but you're going to try to cover it up somehow. Like, that's going to help, you know. We're going to try to hide in the closet. That'll, that'll do it. He won't see it then. He already sees it, y'all. He wants to know you. Um, conviction also is meant to build us up. Man, is, conviction is meant to build us up into something that God is already designing for us into a better future with hope and with joy and with love. But uh, condemnation is meant to tear us down. It's meant to make us feel like we are not enough, like we are not worthy, like we are not truly his sons or daughters. What else does, uh, what's the difference become again? So conviction pulls us closer to the heart of God, while condemnation tries to isolate and pull us away from the heart of God. And you see, uh, my mom says actually something too, which I'm going to steal again. <laughs> um, she says that God loves you where you are, but loves you too much to leave you there. See, it's the heart of God for you to continue to grow, to, <laughs> to continue to move forward with him because ultimately it's gonna be so much better for you. He doesn't just promise us everlasting eternal life in heaven, but he promises us that if we would trust him, if we would let him in, that we would have abundant life here on earth. 
that we would truly live with the fullness of joy. It says that the presence of God is the fullness of joy. And that when he speaks to us, that is also, that is, he is reverberating words of joy into our heart. Will we let that in tonight? Will we truly acknowledge that? I want to tell you a story too. Okay, so I, uh, <laughs> this is way back. I was just talking to a friend um, a, wh- a little while ago, and we were just going back through like the greatest hits of our childhood, okay? It was classic, so fun. And um, <laughs> I came past, and suddenly this memory just came out of nowhere, and boy, oh boy, is it a memory. So I was at my uh, uncle's families for Thanksgiving, okay? And I was there, and I was probably like five. I was, that's a good age, so I was probably five. And I, <laughs> I'm the youngest of like my entire family. Like I was the last child. They were like, okay, we're, we're done after him. It's a little scary. Um, <laughs> so we're done. And I'm there. My older siblings are all doing stuff. I'm there. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do to entertain myself? And all of a sudden, I found the holy grail. I found a steps with the most plush carpet in the entire world. I said, I'm riding down these boys for the ne- like next hour. So I did. And I was having the time of my life. I would like, I don't even know how I did it, but I would like lay flat and just, it was so fun. And somehow I didn't break my head or neck somehow, praise the Lord. But while I did that, my family tried to convince me, Luke, 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 you're going to hurt yourself. Stop doing it. Luke, you're going to hurt yourself. Stop doing it. They continued to repeat it. But every single time, I would weigh their voice with a pleasure, like, The pleasure, my five-year-old brain was like, this pleasure is way too good. This is way too fun. So I just kept going. I kept going until finally I was stopped because we had to, you know, kind of eat for Thanksgiving, kind of like the whole point. Um, So I did. But lo and behold, I don't know how I didn't realize this too. I don't know. But afterward, when I got up, I was like, my back doesn't feel right. It feels a little little wonk. Well, lo and behold, I had like a massive brush burn from like top to bottom. It was just like... Have you ever gotten like a really bad sunburn where it just like hurts to even move? It was like that, but on steroids. It was horrific. I was like, oh, well, there goes my day. Lo and behold, the rest of the day was shot. I was just, I was trying to eat dinner, and I was just like, I'm pain. This is just pain. (laughs) This is not good. But oh my goodness, does this paint the picture of conviction in our lives? See, the sin, the, like, it wasn't, I mean, okay, you could maybe label it sin, but going down the stairs, we're going to call that the sin in our lives. See, it is pleasurable. It is fun. Oh, my goodness. Can things be fun when they're sinful? But they are not turn out the way you imagine them to turn out. They're going to leave you way worse than they found you. And see, my parents and my siblings, they were all trying to corral me, say, Luke, stop doing that. You're going to hurt yourself. Just like God would say, God's saying, don't hurt yourself. He's not just trying to rip out the joy out of your life. He's not trying to rip out the fun out of your life. He came to give you the fullness of life. He is showing you what full, true fullness of life actually looks like. Because we have a skewed perception in our mind. So he's trying to tell us that. And yet we continue to ignore him time after time after time. And at some point, he's going to let us get our way. Why? Because we have free will. God has given us the ability to decide. So he gives us this free will. And we choose wrong. A lot of time, (laughs) but afterward, was my family all of a sudden like, oh my goodness, throw him out, trash. He he ignored me five times, I'm done. He's throwing him in the garbage. No, (laughs) they accepted me, they loved me. I'm sure my mom did something that helped with my back. I don't know what you could do for that. I'm sure she did something. She was there for me, they cared for me, and they helped me grow from it. See, that's the same thing with God. Even though you sin, even though you fall away from the glory of God, from the goodness of the the things that he is calling you to, he still accepts you with arms open wide, saying, you are still my child. What I have spoken over you is not now void, but it still rings true because it is from my voice and not from your voice. See, my words will remain true forever and ever. So God says, I love you, you are my chosen one. You can remember that. You can play that back in your head. When the voices of doubt, when the voices of fear come back, play that in your head knowing that, no, that's not true. Yo, I had to do that today. I was so freaked out to come up here again. There was just fears, there's just doubts, there's just insecurities. But you know what? It's not my doing. It's not my calling. It's simply God choosing to use us. And he's choosing to use each one of you. At your schools, at your house, God wants to move through you. Will you let him? So, also, I've got to grab a drink. I'm parched. My goodness. Wow, that was wonderful. Right, come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Everlasting water. Anyways, <laughs> um, okay, so we know God's voice. 
Okay, so we know first, we're gonna go way back. We're gonna bring it back to the beginning, okay? God wants to talk to you. It is not a matter of religion with God. It's not do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this, and now you have my voice. It's a relationship. What does that mean? I know God, but yet he knows me, and he wants to talk to me. Okay, now his voice, it consists of, deep, is deeply personal, consists of perfect love, unimaginable power, and is there to correct and pull us closer to his heart. That is the voice of God. He wants to talk to you. And that would be a real shame if I just told you all these things, and then I just kind of walked up the, the stage and just, okay, figure it out on your own. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try to help you all out. <laughs> um, so I believe that the Bible clearly demonstrates the position that we're in. It's uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Sorry. It says, Martha, Martha. Um, also background again. <laughs> Jesus is at the house of Mary and Martha. So they invited him in. And, okay, wrap your mind into this. Jesus the son of God just walked into your, do- into your house, okay? They just walked into your house, knowing my house, knowing the things that I control cleaning. It ain't clean right now, okay? There's no way it's clean. I said, oh, Jesus, let's, let's talk in the, in the outside here. We're going to go clean real quick. So, oh, my goodness. And how often do we do that with our heart? We try to go clean things up. When God is just asking, come in. He says, I'm knocking at the door. Will you let me in? That's a whole side thing. But anyways, <laughs> um, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. Oh, we can go back to first. Uh, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. See, she was trying to go clean. She was trying to go prep for Jesus. In themselves, they were not bad things. But one thing is needed, indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. Um, so what happens here is Martha tries and go prepare, like I would do. <laughs> but Mary, she, she realizes something. She says, there's only one thing that matters here. And so Jesus is in the house. I'm going to go sit, sit beside his feet. I'm going to go listen to him. If you uh, read the verse, a few verses before, it said that she sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. See, we all have the decision to make. Are we going to be Mary? Are we going to be Martha? Are we going to be Martha? And as God tries to come in, are we going to go get distracted with the things of this world? And see, they can be good things. She was preparing for Jesus. That is not a bad thing. But good things in the wrong place are equal bad things. See, if I, if I take sports, not a bad thing, but if I elevate that to the top of my entire life, that's where I get my identity, that's where I get my um, satisfaction from, then, oh my goodness, yeah, that's a bad thing. Why? Because I'm going to be let down. There's only one thing that truly matters. The verse is stated. There's one thing that matters in our lives. Why? Because we are a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. There's only so much time we have and that there's one God who will endure forever. There is one God who wants us and we can spend eternity with him, but we don't have to wait for eternity. We can encounter him now. So God is speaking. Are you going to be like Mary, who comes to his feet, sets aside time, sets aside the other voices, the other things that she had to do. She made way for the king. She prepared the way for the king of her heart. She said, Lord, you can have my heart as your throne. You can come here. You can dwell here. And I will listen to what you have to say. I will listen to what you have to say over me. I'm not going to rewrite it with the things I tell myself. No, because your voice holds the true power. Your voice holds the true love, the true, um, I know my identity in your voice. There's one thing that matters. Um, So how do we practically do this, though? See, the voice of God, I believe, is something that we can understand, but it's something very hard to explain. I've tried to explain it to myself for the past, like, three years. It's very hard to explain, but I believe it is meant to be like that, too. Because God is so above our knowledge. God is so greater than we can ever imagine. But his voice is still accessible. So what are just some practical tips to understand, to truly walk in to the voice of God? Um, First, I want to say that we have to make time for God and actively listen to him. See, Mary, she had to make time for God. God wasn't going to force himself on her. God wasn't going to force her to listen. She had to set aside time to truly come to the feet of Jesus and say, okay, God, but what do you say? See, this is what I hear. This is what I hear in my head. But God, what do you say? What is your voice saying to me? And you see, the next point says, you have to walk in a personal relationship with him. And I think this is so important because, um, (laughs) actually, I'm going to tell you a story real quick. So uh, Jason Howard, he's like our main founding, not founding pastor, main pastor. (laughs) And he's so great. I love Jason so much. And he's phenomenal. And I saw that he goes on hikes. And he gives, like, Instagram stories of him. Like, oh, my goodness. If he connects with God that way, 
I bet I'm going to connect with God that way. So I go on some hikes. Yo, I'm the most distracted, the most unconnected with God I've ever been in my entire life. I tried to message prep for this. I sat under, I was like, okay, God, we're going to get real peaceful. We're going to go to Dust Park, and we're going to go under the bridge, under, near the streams of water with rocks. We're going to throw some rocks and just think. I went there, I threw some rocks, and I think, and what, literally nothing I wrote that day is in this message. It was not helpful at all. <laughs> See why? Because God wants to speak to you personally. You can't carbon copy how God speaks to whoever and say, okay, this is going to work for me. Y'all, I, I connect more with God. This is actually so true. I connect with God when I'm taking a nap. It's so weird. I, <laughs> I think about verses in my head, and then I just, like, drift to sleep, and I wake up the most peaceful I've ever felt in my entire life. God speaks, to, see, if, I don't know, if Josh tried to do that, he probably doesn't like that at all and probably would not help him. But it helps me, why? Because God speaks to me too. God speaks to you personally. So make time for him and then just allow him to speak. There's a story in Second Chronicles, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, <laughs> but these, um, these people are getting surrounded, okay? And they say, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. See, and then they, they worship God. Before he even speaks, they worship God. I think that's so crucial. It's like the formula to how do you hear God. See, they align their eyes on the source of the only thing that matters. They align their eyes to Almighty God who has the power in his voice to deliver them. And then they worship and praise him. They made time for him. It says that all the people, women, children, like young men, old men, they all came together and they worshiped God. They invited God in. And yet, and then God spoke. He said, he gave them the battle. It was a whole beautiful story. I can't quote off the top of my head. <laughs> but God, that's the same thing for us in our lives. See, we may feel like we're surrounded. We may feel like every single day we're just getting pummeled and pummeled and pummeled. And there's only a certain amount of time until we just fade into dust. And now that nothing matters anymore. But the truth is that God is saying, would you just seek me? Would you make time for me? And I will speak to you. It may look different than the person beside you, but I will speak to you individually, personally, personally. And I will show you the way out of the situation. All right, the last practical point is that to read the word. Y'all, God has already spoken. It says that every single verse in the Bible, every single word is God breathed. See, God has spoken to you. Open that Bible. Begin to recite the truth over yourself. There is power in his words. There is power in the voice of God. He's already spoken. He's already written down. Y'all, if I, and this makes it so much more helpful too, because if I feel like God speaks to me, what do I do? I check it with the, the Bible. I check it with scripture. See, because God's word, what, he's, like, what you feel like he said to you, it will never contradict his word. So, like, that's how you also are wise. And you say, okay, I feel like I just got something from God. And I don't hear, like, audible voices too, just so you understand that. I thought that for a long time, like, I'm just going to hear God speak to me in thunder. It doesn't happen most times. <laughs> Maybe you could, who knows? But he might tug into your heart. He may lay something on your heart. He may put something in your mind. You're like, wait, that, that was not my own thoughts. Hold up. But then I go and say, okay, well, is that in line with the heart of God? Is that in line with the word? And if it is, then okay, I'll take it as true. But if it isn't, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna dismiss that. That's how you can truly dive into, okay, God, I'm gonna walk with you and I'm gonna know your word. I'm gonna recite your truth over me. I'm gonna recite your truth over me because there is power, there is love. And there is such deep, uh, convicting power in it, too, which is so good for us. Um, and worship team, you guys can come up. You see, whether you have walked with God your entire life, or whether this is your first time here in the building and truly hearing about Jesus, why don't you know that Jesus is seeking you out and that you just have to simply receive him. And how do we go about that? How do we truly, and also we can stand to our feet, too, because we're going to worship soon. How do we receive Jesus? You see, in the Bible, it makes it plainly clear. It just means to repent and believe. Okay, so what does repent mean? It's a big word, big, crazy word. Um, repent just means to turn away from my ways and run to God's and believe that his ways are better. And then believe just means that, God, I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe what you say is true. So... Um, with every eye closed, with every head bowed, if you're in this room today and you have never put your faith in Jesus, I want to let you know that he went to heaven and hell so that he can save you. See, our sins deserve a punishment. It says that the wages of sin are death. 
And see, naturally our sin separates us from God. The love of God, he came down, he bore our sin. He took my sin upon himself and he died the death that I deserved so that I can truly be close to God again. He did that for you, for you individually. So if that is you and you wanna accept Jesus into your heart, I'm gonna ask on the count of three that you would raise your hand. It's nothing crazy, it's nothing um, scary. It's just so that you can know that you have decided to put your faith in Jesus. So one, Jesus loves you. Two, he did everything so that you can be close. And three, if that is you, would you raise your hand bold and proudly? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, as one big family, would we pray? Dear Jesus, today, I ask that you would forgive me. Today, I ask that you would come into my heart. I believe you rose from the dead. Be my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I follow you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. If you made that decision, it's the best decision you can make. Connect with the leader. All right, y'all, we're gonna go into a time of worship. We're gonna go into a time of just talking with God. I want us to know that we can access the presence of God, we can access the voice of God, but we just simply let him in. Would you, if you have to find space, you can find space. Allow God to speak to you. All right, y'all, let's worship.